Hi, I'm Jeff Fouts, a tax attorney located in Metro Atlanta with a nationwide law practice helping clients who have serious IRS problems. And here is another client case study from my thousands of case files. An unmarried woman in her late 50s from Savannah, Georgia, recently contacted our firm to see if we could help her with another IRS problem. Actually, this is the second one she had and she was seeking to hire us again. We had previously assisted this woman with an IRS what's called a CP2000 matching audit. It's sometimes called a ROA audit. She had failed to report her stock sales and the IRS wanted to tax her on the sales price of the stock because the IRS had no way of knowing how much she had paid for the stock. We strongly recommended that she remember to report her stock sales on her future tax returns when this second re representation ended. For one reason or, the, or another, she had forgotten to put the needed information on her tax return and she had received this second CP2000 matching audit letter. So this was a, a later tax year. The IRS letter said it looked like she owed them an additional $17,000. Our first step was to get her to sign and give us IRS Form 2848 and IRS Form 8821. These, formed allow, these forms allowed us to represent her before the IRS and obtain important information from the IRS about her case. We called the IRS to obtain documentation, something called an account transcript, and we also requested a wage and income transcript for the tax year being audited. We also requested that our client send us a complete copy of the original tax return that she had filed that was being audited. We sent our client copies of her wage and income transcripts showing her stock sales and we asked that she contact her stockbroker to obtain a schedule, which is just a list, of her realized gains and losses. Once she provided this information to us, we were able to write a response to the audit uh, folks at the IRS showing the correct facts. And these facts included our client's correct basis in her stock and her true gain or loss on the different stock sales. We requested that the IRS recalculate their proposed tax changes. Well, the IRS did recalculate the proposed tax changes and they reduced the additional taxes from about 17,000 to just 450,000, pardon me, to $450, from 17,000 to $450. We also reviewed this client's current year tax return to make sure that it was correct. We didn't want her to get any more robo audit letters. Thankfully, this time, she had correctly reported all of her stock sales. So what's the moral of this story? Always include all of your stock sales on your tax return. You know, the IRS is getting able to get so much information these days that not including something is just about gonna guarantee that you get an audit letter. And so if you do forget one year and the, audit, the IRS sends you a CP2000 matching audit letter, hire a tax professional to file a response for you. I hope this important uh, client case study has helped you understand the IRS just a little bit better and how tax cases are solved. Chances are you may have questions or concerns about your own particular tax problem. I encourage you to pick up the phone and call me. I can answer your questions. Over the past 20 years, I've represented clients in all 50 states and 29 foreign countries, and I welcome your call. You can reach me at the number on this video or by email at jfouts at taxhelpattorney.com. I'm Jeff Fouts, and thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.